Good morning guys! Welcome to the Bitcoin Family YouTube channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi Taihutu. Yes, I am the guy that three years ago sold literally everything he owned, went all into Bitcoin and started traveling the world with his family in a camper van. We are still all in Bitcoin, still traveling the world, supporting this industry 24-7 as a family. Now coming to you guys from Chalak Lam Beach on Koh Phangan, Thailand. Probably the last two days because tomorrow we start our trip to Europe. In today's video, showing you how we did the donation yesterday to Happy Food in Thailand. We collected 110,000 baht, that is 3,500 US dollar. That is 0 0.38 Bitcoin. And we handed over the donations yesterday. And it's a very cool video about this. Enjoy today's video, guys. Yesterday was an amazing day guys because yesterday we were handing over the donations we collected in the last weekend for happy food here in Thailand. In total we collected 110,000 Thai baht. That's 3,500 US dollar. That's 0 0.38 Bitcoin. This is what we collected in three days times and we donated it yesterday to happy food in Thai baht cash. So and converted all these cryptos into Thai baht and then I gave this Thai bath to the organization. Um, it was a beautiful day. The founder of the organization was there, of course, to uh, receive the donation. He explained to my children and to my wife and to all the other people that were there why he started to build this Happy Food, uh, why he started to build Happy Food and to what e Happy Food is evolving for the next couple of months. And, you know, the money we were able to donate yesterday, 110,000 baht. That's about 6,000 meals. So because of you guys there, because of, so because guys, you are, so because guys, you, you that were so generously donating to the crypto wallets, 6,000 meals can be created for all these people, for all these homeless and jobless people now here on Koh Phangan. 6,000 meals almost. So this is the power of crypto. This is the power of the community. I really want to thank you at the bottom of my heart because it's, it was really painful for me to see these people standing in these lines and to, to tell my kids what was happening in the world and why these people now were standing in lines for food. They, they, they even couldn't understand it. Everybody should be able to have food. Yes, I told my daughters, but the world is not always equally honest for everybody and that's why we need to help them and that's why we need to lead by example and i did this again for my kids to see leading by example we pull this wagon we try to get some money in for these people do you know how much children learn from this just because you as a parent because i as a parent you just do it and you lead by example they learn everything they will copy and paste this in their life this is what I think is really important. But again, guys, it was not only my effort. Most of the donations, the biggest part was done by you guys. 3,500 US dollar. 6,000 meals were just given to Happy Food because of you. Thank you so much for supporting all these people here in Koh Phangan. They will keep me up to date with videos, what they are going to do with the money. So every time they are going to spend, they will make videos and they will send them to me so I can show you again how this is affecting all these lives of the people now in the coming weeks and months. Welcome to the Heritage Garden. This is where Happy Food started. So in the beginning, around 1st of April, we understood uh, that uh, due to COVID, there would be problems on this island for a lot of people. And I didn't know much. I lived in Thailand for five years. I think I knew the culture, but I know nothing. And I know absolutely nothing about Myanmar culture. So we started out serving food here. Uh, a very kind man who used to be the head monk of Chaloklom Temple. Uh, he now runs this place and when I came to him and said we wanted to do something for Myanmar people He said come in use my place do whatever you want here So we set this up as a big kitchen 
And we served food on the long tables here for the first month, and we served prepared food. Uh, but then when I looked at our donations and the number of people who needed help and how long I think this would last, because I may be pessimistic or realistic, but I think the lack of tourism is going to be a problem for Kupanyang for a long, long, long time. And the people who suffers the most, always, unfortunately, the poorest people. And these Myanmar people already, when we started, or when COVID started, they were living in small huts, but they were not suffering. They made 10,000 baht every month, and mother, father worked, and grandmother looked after the children, whatever, so they were able to cope in very basic living standards. For us, well, I don't know, possible, <laughs> but yeah. But when obviously when COVID uh, started and tourists stopped coming, uh, they were uh, laid off their work from all the places they were working. And suddenly we had thousands of Myanmar people on this island with no social support, no welfare system, no support from home. And of course they have their neighbors, but they are in the same situation as them. So when you live on minimum standards, 10,000 baht a month, and you take that away, obviously you have no savings, nothing to lean back on. So uh, in my opinion, the, the problem became quite acute. So we started immediately. And we just got together a number of people and we threw a few 10,000 baht uh, in, the, in the bowl each and we started serving food from here. And we had the Myanmar women together with the Thai people preparing the food and we were just running around getting donations and buying food. Uh, after a while I saw that this is not sustainable because every meal cost us 70 baht and we couldn't keep on doing that with so many people. So we decided to change. We decided to do what I'm used to, what I used to do in the UN when I was engaged in the UN peacekeeping forces in Lebanon. So we started giving just the basics to people. So we asked the Myanmar leaders, what do people need? And the answer wasn't that surprising, rice, which is the uh, start of every meal in, in Thailand and Myanmar and other countries. Like in Norway, if we don't have potatoes, it's difficult to make food. Uh, and I thought, if they have rice enough, if we can make sure that they have rice, they can find the coconut, they can go to the water and find some fish or some seashells. Or, so they managed to get through, they managed to get the extra protein and fat and stuff that they needed. And I think also some of them bartered some of the rice that they got from us. Even the baby. If they got some baby milk powder or adult diapers or whatever they needed for that rice in addition to eating it, fantastic. So we kept on doing that for two months and we handed out around 10,000 kilos of rice every week. And we were very lucky because Toto, who is supposed to come here later, he has contacts on the mainland. So not, not come. coming. Uh, okay. not make it so I am now both myself and Toto. <laughs> Thank you, Toto. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, so he helped us uh, get in contact with the wholesalers on the mainland. So we started getting shipments of rice, 20, 30,000 kilos at a time. We, uh, when the truck arrived, we were just we gathered 50 men, Myanmar men mostly, and we just unloaded the truck and kept all the rice in that building over there that's now about to fall apart. Not due to us, like everything else in the world, especially in the tropics. Um, so we, uh, we set up five distribution points around the island, and we told all the Myanmar people, if you need help, if you're unemployed, and the Thai people, and for that matter of sex, Europe, sake, Amer Europeans or Australians or Americans, if you have nothing, you need food, you can come to us and get. And we gave them 500 grams of rice each every day, every week. So they all got three and a half kilos of rice each. And if you were two years old, you could hold a bag or your mother could hold you and she could hold the bag for you. We gave for yeah. both people. So all the people who showed up got rice, uh, three and a half kilos each. And we had, I think at the time, 50, 60 people, volunteers engaged in scooping rice and transporting rice. and. When you get these, these volumes, it's difficult because it's not three bags of rice, it's suddenly 70 bags of rice there and a normal pickup truck, truck can only carry like 30 bags maybe. So a lot of logistics. Uh, and I'm quite proud of that we were able to set that up and we fed. So during that two and a half months plus the, the, the prepared food we did in the beginning, we served um, around 250,000 years which is quite a lot done by volunteers with no money. Uh, so we, we've been uh, uh, haggling our families and friends and everybody we know. It almost had, felt like an MLM scheme because I had to sell this to my family. You have to help here. Uh, but it's difficult in Norway too now, but not as difficult as here. So bring me the money. 
yeah. and uh, that's been going on. We decided uh, three weeks ago that we would at least pause the mass rice distribution because we saw the number of people going down and we heard due to optimism around among the Thais about tourism returning, we heard that a lot of the Thais started hiring the Myanmar people again to prepare for tourists coming back. The unfortunate thing is that most of these people used to make 10,000 baht working, having two days off every month, working in a hotel or a bar in a construction site. Now I've heard everything from 2,000 to 5,000 baht. So they get their jobs back, but they serve, they've given money that to me is so close to slavery. Uh, and they are in a very unfortunate position. They are kind of paperless because the Thai managers who arrange for them to come here and get them work, they confiscate their work permit and their passport. So if they end up in trouble with the police, uh, their Thai manager pay them out and then he deducts that from their pay later. So it's mm -hmm. a big scheme of really extorting these people. Uh, obviously, many Myanmar people on Kupanyang had a better life before COVID than people living in Myanmar. But um, for me as a Norwegian or European, uh, the working conditions and the living conditions and the vulnerability of these people really, really hurts me. And I, I, it, it feels deeply unfair uh, a system like that but again this is Asia it's not Norway so we're just trying to move with what we see of cultural opportunities and and uh, blocks as good as we can and maneuver around it and keep focused on one thing and that is to get money from our rich friends in Europe and feed uh, hungry Myanmar children with it uh, but in this there's a lot of politics and politicians who wants to use us for their benefit to get positive um, sentiment from future mm -hmm. voters and yeah uh, it's a different place than europe in many many ways we decided to change again so we put in the third gear and we asked the myanmar leaders to give us lists of the most vulnerable uh, myanmar people so that would be pregnant women families with children under four years old elderly disabled uh, and the severely unemployed meaning people who have absolutely no income so we have a list of, uh, a growing list now started last Monday, 300 people. It's gonna go up to 500 quite quickly, I think, because we find new people in distress all the time and we add them to our database. But now we, what we do now is we, we purchase uh, a lot of food, including rice, but also onions and dried fish and stuff. And we pack it individually for each person. And we hand it over to the four Myanmar leaders who then distribute it in each location. So we, believe that we reach every Myanmar person on the island uh, in addition to also be in compliance with the local culture we've uh, told uh, the Thai, some of the Thai leaders we know that uh, ask them to please identify the hundred most vulnerable elderly Thai people on the island so people without family people who can't leave their home and we intend to give them a similar uh, package every two weeks so that's the status now for the future. We hope that we can ride this out and, and provide basic food security for these people until whatever COVID ends or changes. And then we want to uh, start helping people setting up their own businesses. We already done something. I personally bought these women a sewing machine and they made <coughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of bags and wallets. This is of course my favorite wallet <laughs> ever, the Happy Food wallet. Happy food. But wow. it's, it's, right, made, back. It's, it's made by the Myanmar women. Cuckoo. Happy it's Food wallet. Yeah. yeah, from the rice bag. Yeah, from, from the rice, rice bag. Bags. So it's recycled, made by vulnerable people, helping themselves is so beautiful, I almost cry when I think mm. about it. But it is really that beautiful. And now they provided the 300 bags made of all rice bags for our distribution to give to Myanmar people. So it's really in cooperation with the people receiving the, the aid themselves. And I think that's the best way to do it. It's, uh, it's I have one left only. Wow. <laughs> Cherish it. So cool. That give you free entrance to every discotheque in Bangkok. <laughs> <laughs> Don't show it to my wife and kids. <laughs> Um, happy yeah, of course. I want to say a little bit too as well. So it's the wallet. So as a b the Bitcoin family, my family and I, we, we have been traveling all the world and trying to um, raise as much as possible money and just by selling our book, by doing everything, vlogging, blogging and giving this money again to poor people. 
and I met you already here in this garden when there was a beautiful reggae bar, a uh, reggae band playing, and then I heard the story and I started to Google it, and then my friend Lex told me about the story that German people, who I know, was always also doing donations. So I was like, let's let's dig in this story, and I saw the video that everybody was making. I saw how many volunteers were helping the people. I saw those people standing in lines for an hour in the yeah, sun yeah. in the line to get a rice bowl. So I figured out I cannot leave this island without giving something uh, as as our family, as the whole crypto community. So we made a YouTube video, and in this YouTube video, I just said, guys, I have some crypto wallets. Deposit, please deposit Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, dash into these wallets. I will transact it to. Um, um, Thai bot, and then we will do a donation. I also said, okay, you can also donate to the GoFunding page of uh, of Happy Food. Um, that was picked up by a few other YouTubers as well, and they started to promote it as well. So there was money coming in in crypto wallets and money coming in in the GoFunding page. And it, it's now three days ago we made this video, as in, uh, I think. And as a crypto community, we want to show that crypto is not only about accumulating wealth but also about sharing that yes. is what we want to preach we want to preach that sharing is caring so crypto is not there to just become millionaire if you become a millionaire if you get your lamborghini start to think about these people that really are in need so we gathered in total how much did we gather in total can you show that okay. and uh, you take it in that time yeah so in total wow. we get at 110 000 thai baht okay. fantastic that's about three thousand five hundred us dollar and to educate you in crypto, this is 0 0.38 BTC. <laughs> like I didn't know. <laughs> 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 and I <d> Yay! <laughs> wow. I want to okay. um, And I will, as a family, I want to also help the organization with setting up their own Bitcoin wallets and everything. Because I don't want to be the middleman. I just want to shine the light on projects and I want people to do direct donations to you guys. I don't want to be in between. I did it for once because I really saw the need. But then I hope I uh, can get a coffee with you together and just uh, educate you. And Please how do. can we add some Bitcoin wallets to the website? And I just shine the light on those wallets and then everything goes directly to you guys so that we don't need our never mind. May I hug you? Yeah, of family? course. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. Uh, you're oh, welcome. And you're, you're such welcome. a fantastic example uh, for your daughters, man. This is really, really. They need to understand. Sadly, we need to leave because else we would have helped with distributing the food as well for a day or something. Um, but they, they luckily were able to help Jet with uh, feeding all the dogs in the yes. island already. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we do our contribution everywhere. Fantastic. So. And when are you leaving? Uh, we are leaving Tuesday, so we need to go to Europe. I'm going there with the family just for two weeks to Holland, two weeks to Spain, to Switzerland. Bulgaria and some other countries also again to track uh, investors because we have an amazing plan that we want to convert Copenhagen to this beautiful green eco island built on blockchain technology where we show the whole world like in a small proof of work how you can live together as a community but also create beautiful new decentralized versions of the centralized world we have been living in because we think the whole centralized world is the cause of all these people now being in hunger. It's not fair. Not the money is shared fairly. And as an island in Copangan with the project House of Dao, we want to create a decentralized proof of work. Show the world, lead by example. Like I lead example back to my kids. And we as a community need to lead by example to show how you can live and not just live to accumulate wealth, but to accumulate happiness and share your wealth because that will make you more happy in the end. Yeah. But now, if you make the calculation, the value, let's say you put the value of 10 euros for you in Europe. If you m move that 10 euros to a person living in Africa or in Thailand or somewhere else, you are vulnerable. That money actually has 10 times the value. Yeah. So just by transporting it from your own bank account to somebody else's bank account, you tenfold the value of the money. Of the money so it makes it makes no sense to not do it. No. Everybody should pay 10% so of what they are. And, 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 and that is, I think, exactly where crypto comes in because these people that don't have the money now, they do have an iPhone, they yeah. don't have a bank account, mm -mm. but now it's possible for me on the other side of the world to send like 0 0.01 Bitcoin to these people, people on a telephone and that like tenfold the value of it for yeah. him. Yeah. And that's why I think blockchain Bitcoin is the ideal situation and the solution for all these uh, distributions of equally equally distribution of wealth. Again. I couldn't agree more. And that's I why there are projects we support where children are able to save money in a wallet, in a Bitcoin wallet, and they can, in the same wallet, <coughs> they can uh, press like donation and they donate one euro of their allowance to a poor kid in the world. 
Very so nice. So there are many projects built at the moment on this uh, beautiful um, technology called the blockchain. So excellent. Thank you also Yay! for coming. Yay! Yay! That was everything for today. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. If you did enjoy the video and my small eyes, give it a thumbs up, share it with your community, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and please leave a comment as I love to answer your comments. Yesterday we had again more than 300 thumbs up. I want to have more and see more than 300 thumbs up today again because that's exactly what the YouTube algorithm also wants to see and which will make our channel grow. That will lead into more monetization of our channel and more monetization of my channel will lead to more donations to poor people. Because remember, we are giving away the revenues of our YouTube channel to all these poor people, NGOs, and all these charity organizations we meet during our travels. Please remember to zoom out in crypto and to zoom in in life. Enjoy every single minute of the day because that is exactly what makes life worth living. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you tomorrow again. Bye.